What's going on guys? Welcome to the look around with Manolo, 96 Honda Civic EK hatch. This is currently my circuit build and you're here with Koenig wheels. Come on in. Thought, uh, thought this is gonna be like the same old interview of showing you what this car has and yo, look how cool I am. Now nah, we're gonna twist shit up a little bit in this video. So it's, uh, it's a 96 Honda Civic. I scooped it up in California. Uh, got it from one of my gunners out there, absolutely free. All he said was, man, just come through and, and show some love. And I did that. Big shout out to my brother OEM Works out in California. Uh, yeah, 96 Honda Civic, never built a circuit car in my life. And uh, we, grabbed, we, we grabbed the bull by the horns and this is where we're at. So, and now for the star of the show, uh, Koenig Decagram. Uh, this is a wheel that um, Scott had helped me out with when I was inquiring about a wheel setup. He said the best thing to do is go into a square setup. So what a square setup means is uh, one rim is not wider than the other, whether it's directional, front or rear. So these are 15 by eight, all four corners, plus 35 offset with a four by 100 uh, lug pattern. Um, very light rim, very easy to work with. I, I just love the way that it looks. It's, it almost has like an OEM kind of ITR JDM look to it, but I like the lip. It's also flow formed, so, which just means it's, uh, it's, it's the real deal. So now the square setup wheel, but not the tire square setup. So the rear tires are 225, 45, 15. The front tire is a 245, 45, 15. So it's a little bit wider in the front because obviously the vehicle is front wheel drive. The side skirts are five inch. They're made by PCI. We put some quick latches on them here just so we can make it easier for us to get off and on the trailer. Um, because you just simply press this little button here. You can unclip them off and there goes your aerodynamics within a span of three buttons. Um, the outside isn't the most beautiful canvas yet because we were honestly building this car to make a lot of mistakes and Eventually we are going to wrap this car and just you know put on a whole bunch of supporters um, stickers and uh, make it look sexy so That's that goes there. Uh, I've got some track life fender cutouts here uh, these help with uh, just releasing air and tunneling it through the chassis so this was awesome. I also picked up this Ultra Race. Um, it's like a it's like a frame reinforcement bar that goes from the the hinges here. I'll show you guys when I open the door, and then they go to this frame on the chassis here behind the fender. Uh, front lip, my favorite, Amazon, 50 bucks. I don't care if it breaks. I'll just buy another one. Uh, headlights are OEM. They got cleaned up by Legends. Not a bad looking headlight. Same thing with the grill. $35 Amazon front grill. I believe this is a Saibon vented carbon fiber hood. It's an awful shape, but I picked it up for 200 bucks. Again, wanted to make a lot of mistakes. We made a lot of mistakes with it, and now we know exactly what to do. Uh, quick latches here, just to make life easy when working on the car. Aftermarket uh, front end, which is $40 fenders, like a $50 bumper. Picked up these air scoops that would just, you know, once we uh, upgrade our brake system, we'll add like a two and a half inch tube to the back of the um, caliper and just help the brakes uh, cool off much quicker. But these were like a hundred bucks on eBay. The mesh, it was like 30 bucks by the roll of like 30 feet. So that wasn't re really too expensive. Put my hat over it. I just got stung. Was it because I was lying about something? This guy, and I, and I told him, don't kill him. <laughs> I said, don't kill him. He's not dead, though. I've, yeah, I, there, you know, there's like a, there's like a, there's like a, a shortage on bees. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so as we transition over to this side of the car, uh, just some simple Civic Type R mirrors, which are not so simple. I believe that these mirrors are eventually going to go for like a thousand, twelve hundred bucks. It seems as though like everything in the Honda game has just been, you know, inflating, inflating, inflating. And um, I guess uh, 
I guess I got lucky and I grabbed these from also a gunner too. So Civic Type R mirrors, they power fold in. We'll show you how those work. Uh, in the back here is the spoiler. This is the PCI version three spoiler. This thing's awesome. I really haven't had enough time to use it because what someone suggested, which was actually PCI, was you should go out racing for the first time with no aerodynamics. So when we first went down to Florida and uh, we tested the car, uh, we took all the aerodynamics off, which included the spoiler, the side skirts. Uh, we didn't diffuse the bottom uh, of the car yet because honestly, it was just a learning curve for us. And um, with the way that the car performed, um, I'm overly, overly uh, anxious to add the aerodynamics. So here on the back bumper, we're just diffusing air out, so we don't want anything trapped behind a bumper. Some people really don't like the way that diffusers look, but they do have a purpose. So any of the air that is traveling underneath the car, most likely it's going to get trapped behind the bumper and it's gonna create a negative wall. So that's what a diffuser is meant to be. It's just made for you to take all of the air underneath the car and diffuse it out through the back bumper. This is a keep gunning one. I designed this maybe two years ago. It's, um, it, it wasn't in great condition to sell, so it didn't, it didn't, it didn't pass uh, quality control, so we ended up using it on Manolo. Uh, un, behind that is a Mayhem, uh, basically a bumper support bar. It's just a little bit cooler, a little bit sexier, nicer, cleaner. I got the front and rear one. This guy does amazing work, man. Uh, his wife's battling cancer right now, so if he sees this part here, didn't get this part for free, paid full price, didn't want a discount. I wanted to support a small business. Uh, if you see this message here, man, I, I pray that you and your family are uh, overcoming that obstacle. You guys, I need you, I want you, I ain't shit without you. Inside here, we just have some simple uh, bolt-on bars to reinforce the chassis. I didn't want to spend too much money on uh, putting in a roll cage yet because I have, again, learning curve, have not learned a car. This is a PLM X bar, very affordable. I think I paid like $2.90 for it shipped. Um, did its job, car is super rigid. Uh, in front of that is a, uh, an Amazon seat brace bracket holder, whatever you want to call it. That was around 110 bucks. So I got to save some money there. So back here, you're gonna see like this whole little jungle of bars and struts and stuff. PCI spherical rear lower control arms. Um, one of my favorite features on this car is the suspension. The Fortune Auto was so easy to work with. It came pre-preset, preloaded. I just played with the dampening a little bit and probably some of the best money I spent was on that coilover right there. Huge shout out to that company. Thank you for the discount, absolutely. But if I'm ever building another circuit car, I'm not using any other strut. Um, there is a lot going on with suspension here. We have the Hone Centering Kit. They're a company out in Australia. Guys, unbelievable quality parts. A little bit on the pricey side, but you can tell that those parts are gonna last a very, very long time. So I've got everything under there that has to do with camber and, and braces in Hone development. So the rear camber, the rear toe, um, the centering kit also. The centering kit just at basically um, evens the car up with the front ball joint. So you just have the car stationary in one particular position. So before we leave the rear section of the car where the rear rim is, let's just talk about this brake setup. This is just a custom brake setup. Not that I came up with, I read a couple of forums. That is a base model caliper RSX the rotor is an EP34 lug, and the brake pad is a base model RSX. So that is the rear, definitely worked. So thank you to all my followers that suggested that. My brake lines are finishing lines, st uh, stainless steel with a, a uh, adjustable proportioning valve, and uh, 
that's the rear brake setup. Guys, if you're looking to save a lot of money and not overdo it, I spent roughly around 190 bucks shipped for my rear brake setup. Definitely worth the money. Front brake setup is really fun too. Uh, super affordable and boy did it work when we went down to Florida. The caliper is CRV 2000. The brake pad is a 2004 TSX and the rotor is a 2011 Mini Cooper base model. Unbelievable, unbelievable for the cost, how well it performed. This is the way to go when you are first building a circuit car and I guarantee you love it. So now let's transition um, into the cockpit. Pause, I paused. Inside here, um, basically this is the office. You've got a status steering wheel. You've got a status uh, driver's seat. In here, um, we had, uh, you know, gutted the inside of the door and just ended up making door cards here with a, with a door handle like that. We wanted to lighten up the car, but still have some reinforcement. So behind this door card is still that factory brace that goes across the door. So it's not a super light door, but I can take it off because it's on quick release hinges by K-Tune. Seat belts, five point harness, same by Status. They're one of my, uh, one of my sponsors and I love those guys. Big shout out to Justin. Thank you for always taking care of me. So inside here is where all the fun happens. Uh, there's not much going on, but everything has function and form. So I've got my oil pressure gauges here, which is uh, oil temp. I've got water temp and I've got oil pressure. I've got my AEM Uego for air fuel. I've got my fan switch for my oil cooler. We put a small, nice little, uh, it's like a four and a half little fan that has so much power. You could actually hear it when I click it on. And that's all the way in the front bumper. So just in case that the temps get a little too hot, I can just turn this fan on while I'm driving, start to cool the oil down even quicker. Um, inside of here, again, um, huge shout out to uh, Finishing Lines. They are uh, responsible for my brake line setup, uh, uh, an adjustable proportioning valve. It's a 50-50. I think right now I have it somewhere around 70-30, where 70% of the pressure is going to the front brakes, obviously, and then 30% is going to the rear. Another holy grail in the Honda world is um, the SI cluster, 99 to 2000. It only came out in two years, so they're super rare. Some of these clusters are actually going for a thousand bucks. I got this gifted by a gunner. I am the Lambong for all my Spanish people out there that, uh... <laughs> Shifter box is very simple. It's just a brand new, and I always suggest it to buy a brand new RSX Type S six-speed shifter. It's sitting on type of a, it's sitting on top of a hybrid racing uh, shifter plate. I don't know, some, you know what it is too with my followers, um, you know, I get real emotional talking about them because they're always uh, they're always trying hard to help me because I help them so much. I've got messages to where I'm arguing with them for maybe three days on taking payment and they just don't want to take the money. I even have to like beg to pay for shipping and they won't want to take that. It's a, it's a mutual love and respect that we have for each other because I'm pretty sure some of you are going to be watching this video right now and saying, man, he got a lot of stuff from his gunners, so I always try to pay them back tenfold. And we have a we have a great movement together. We all, most importantly, we love and respect each other, which is uh, probably the greatest part of my social media career of how much support I have. Okay, so now it's time to show you guys uh, underneath the hood, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you are excited to see it. Just some regular quick latches here to hold up the hood. And here you go. This is a 1994 Acura LS motor with a K-Series transmission. All-wheel drive, Vortex supercharged, all-motor nitrous turbo. <laughs> If you're wondering where the turbo is, it's underneath that box. I know what I got, bro. I know what I got. 
pissing around, man. Tell him the truth, bro. All right. Let's do it over. My bad. <laughs> okay, so um, very simple setup. This is a factory JDM TSX motor. I picked it up at Engine Depot, $900 long block. Very, very affordable. Anyone can do this build. I have shown you on my KG channel how to do every single thing that you see here. So JDM TSX motor long block K24A for anyone that's curious. The engine code is K24A. What's been done to the long block? Not much. It has a unit to fabrication supported oil pump. It has a unit to fabrications aluminum nine quart oil pan. And that thing is a nightmare and it's expensive, but it's worth every penny because it also acts like an oil cooler. Yo, this shit got crazy. That's a beautiful oil can. Yo, great job welding your ass off on oh, here, man. Look at that, bro. This so it's got about, I would say, almost nine baffle windows inside. So it always leaves room for the oil to cool down. Um, from there, we'll just keep it onto the long block. South Bay, 1,000cc injectors. Huge shout out to South Bay. The only injectors I use, they're great. Car has a factory RBC, not ported. Factory RSX Type S throttle body. You now, the reason if you're wondering like, hey, why didn't you upgrade the intake manifold? When you're building a circuit car, more power is not always a good thing. So this car made almost 240 horsepower. Oh no, I'm sorry. It almost made 230 horsepower. I'd like to detune the car and have it around 190 horsepower into a turn you don't want way too much horsepower, especially for the way that this car, for, for the weight of this vehicle. So I'd like to have the car make less power. I've got a regular simple eBay header. Um, it's going to a three inch full thermal exhaust system. I love thermal exhaust. They sound amazing. I have them on every single car that I build. Now here's a little fun, tricky part that some people might look at and wonder why is there three vacuum lines and one of them is going to the transmission. Now, no one's ever really spoken about this and I guess that's why I'm kind of disliked in, um, I guess, my genre of car building, like the Honda import scene. I feel as though everyone's so secretive and no one wants to share knowledge and I honestly also believe that's the huge part of my success is that I teach underdogs everything that the pros don't want to teach them. So this catch can was made by AB Fab. You've got two dash 10s going to the valve cover, and then you have a dash 10 going to the transmission. So the same way that crank pressure case happens in a motor and you want the air to come out and breathe is the same thing with the transmission. It actually picks up almost three to five horsepower just by venting the transmission because there's less crank case pressure building inside of the transmission. From there, OEM shifter cables. I am running the best clutch in the world. This company has been behind me for five years. They've never rejected me. They've never denied me. Amazing company action clutch. I have a stage two. It's Kevlar disc with a chrome molly flywheel and boy does it take a beating so a little bit further into the engine bay because there is a lot going on and you're just probably wondering like hey what's that what's that passport motor mounts ek k2s um, using an eg subframe whenever you do whenever you do use uh ek k2s you need to install an eg subframe the eg subframe with the ek k2s allows for a smoother drive line on the axle. So they're not like cocked forward or cocked back. Pause. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and it's got a straight line onto them. RSX Type S axles with Carcep 36 millimeter hubs. The best axles in the world to do a swap on a K-Series. OEM, RSX Type S axles. Store this in your notes. Whenever you're building a Civic EK 96 and up, you need a passenger side 2006 to 2011 SI, and the driver side needs to be a 2002 to 2004 RSX Type S. Uh, moving on to the cooling system, dash 16 lines into a CSF radiator, which we ended up tucking underneath 
the um, rad support. So if you're wondering why it's sitting here, it's because we're trying to keep all the heat out of the engine compartment. We're trying to keep everything cool under here. That's why the hood is vented. That's why there's two twin uh, uh, spow fans, which in my opinion, the best fans in the world. Spow 12 inch fans, they're pushers. And um, into a track, uh, track tough uh, side coolant housing. Um, over to a track tough um, thermostat housing. Everything is dash 16. Uh, the fans are set up on a, on, a, on a relay. Also, I have a Mishimoto oil cooler with dash 12 lines, and it's also mounted behind this bumper being held by the, um, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to take off the bumper. It's fitting super nice right now. So behind here is the oil cooler with the fan and it's being held up with the uh, Mayhem front uh, bumper support. So the front camber kit is a PCI. It's also got the extended ball joints from Home Development. We have ourselves, you gotta be on you, you gotta be on you. Yeah. It's out, it's out, look, look. See him? <laughs> oh so my God. Get out without interrupting you. Go yeah. Okay, so guys, uh, this has probably been one of the most dangerous documentaries or reviews that Koenig has ever had to do. I got stung in the head. Max almost got stung in the belly button. And Lewis, and, and Lewis almost got a hickey by one. We're out here. We're out here risking our lives to show you what we've built. Can you believe that? Front camber kit, PCI. Bottom ball joints are extended by Home Development. We've got Home Development um, tie rods, which have a, like a bump stop at the end of them so you don't overturn the rack. Front sway bar, very simple. It's an Integra USDM front sway bar. We've got some energy suspension bushings holding it up. Uh, the lower control arms are spherical. They're made by Skunk2. Big shout out to Dave, the biggest savage on social media the owner of Skunk 2. I'm probably, again, missing a couple of miscellaneous things that I'm forgetting to tell you guys. But again, you can, if you wanna get more into depth about this build, go check out my KG uh, Garage channel on YouTube and you can find all the information that I miss telling you. Mind that check engine light, boys and girls. That's for TPS. I gotta change it. <laughs>